Winning a basketball game is a matter of simple physics. If I have a player here and I exert a force here at a certain distance from his center, he will twist and turn head over heels. Mass times acceleration equals force. Work divided by time equals power. But the opposition may have a winning formula of its own. Tonight, we'll see whether it's Rich Brower's St. Louis Billikens or Rich Heron, Southern Illinois Salukis, who have the best chemistry on the floor. that's not really a matchup. Kevin Foots, a 6-6 forward for St. Louis. Who's going to go against him tonight is the question. Well, first of all, Foots is an extremely talented player, but as you see on the only 24 minutes of action, he's had some off-court problems, been late for some practices and meetings. He's only playing 24 minutes, but Sterling Mahan will get the call for SIU. Now, the interesting thing about him, he's only 6-1, so he's giving up a lot of height. This is sort of a backyard battle here between Southern Illinois and St. Louis. Earlier tonight, we talked to SIU coach Rich Heron about it. This will be a very tough ball game for us tonight, and there's a great rivalry between the Slukies and St. Louis U. And the thing we've got to do, we've got to contain their fast break, and they're a very explosive team. Of course, they're led by two outstanding players in Bonner and Kevin Foots. They are packed into the SIU Arena in Carbondale here tonight. The excitement building. We're getting close to game time. Right now, let's get you back to Chris Fowler at ESPN, and then we'll be back to meet the starting lineups. Okay, thank you, Fred, and welcome once again to our college basketball studios with those frigid temperatures spreading across most of the country. Good night just to stay at home and catch a little college hoops. This is another one of those backyard brawls you've been enjoying. You name these French works of art. ESPN's NCAA Basketball, St. Louis at Southern Illinois, is brought to you by Olympus, makers of 35mm cameras and video, and by the exciting, innovative, unconventional new spirit of Dodge. The Billikens of St. Louis come into this ball game with a 3-2 record coached by Rich Grower. Southern Illinois unbeaten at 6-0. Coached by Rich Heron. We're set to meet the starting lineups. Let's join public address announcer. Good evening, Brian ladies Vegas. and gentlemen, and welcome to the SIU Arena and Saluki Basketball. Tonight, Southern Illinois University and the Missouri Valley Conference welcomes a national television audience on ESPN as the Salukis host the Billikens of St. Louis University of the Midwestern Collegiate Conference. Now, let's meet the starting lineups. First, for St. Louis University. At forward, a 6'6 junior from Chicago, Illinois, number 32, Kevin Foots. At the other forward position for the Billikens, a 6'8 senior from St. Louis, number 34, Anthony Bonner. Starting at center for the Billikens, a seven-foot freshman from St. Louis, number 50, Melvin Robinson. 
Starting at a guard for St. Louis, 6'3", and a junior from Washington, Missouri, number 11, John Duff. And at the other guard for the Pelicans, a 6'3", senior from Chicago, number 14, Charles Newberry. St. Louis is coached by Rich Brower in his eighth season. Now, the starting lineup for your SIU Saluki. Starting it forward, a 6'8 junior from Central Illinois, number 40, Rick Shipley. At the other forward for the Salukis, a 6'6 senior from Country Club Hills, Illinois, number 44, Jerry Jones. Starting at center for SIU, a 6'10 junior from Hoopston, Illinois, number 55, David Bush. Starting at one guard for the Salukis, a 6'1 junior from Maywood, Illinois, number 11, Sterling Mayhem. And at the other guard, a 6'5, a senior from Birmingham, Alabama, number 23, Freddie McSwain. Southern Illinois is coached by Rich Heron in his fifth season. Our officials this evening are Ted Hillary, Ron Zetcher, and Jim Choker. There you have them, the starting lineups and the coaches for both basketball teams here tonight. Again, it's St. Louis and Southern Illinois and Carbondale, Illinois this evening. And we'll be back to tip it off right after you watch this. Again, it's St. Louis and Southern Illinois at the SIU Arena in Carbondale, Illinois, where the students are just about to go on break and are out to celebrate and have some fun at a basketball game here tonight. John Albright, Game Notes. Well, you can see that important meeting last year, St. Louis winning in the first round. They ended up going to the finals of the NIT last year, and Southern Illinois off to their best start since 76. See an impressive record right here in SIU Arena. 6-0 this year for the Salukis. If they win tonight, it'll be their best start in 50 years. So Rich Heron is turning this program around after 29 years as a high school coach in this area. He got his shot, and he's turning this program in his fifth year. Salukis with the basketball off the baseline. That's Rick Shipley getting the shot down. St. Louis wants to make it a transition game, and that's something that Rich Heron's concerned about. And you got a good look. Bonner taking it all the way. That's on the transition game. Dave Bush picks up the foul as Bonner hit the bucket to tie the ball game. That didn't take long to get down court. Well, Rich Heron told us today that he was concerned about the transition game, and you get a good look at St. Louis doing what they feel much more comfortable about doing, and, and that's running it coast to coast. That time, Bonner did a good job of getting down court. Chance for the three-point play. Anthony Bonner, a strong 6'8 senior, averaging 18 points and 13 rebounds of ball game. Completes the three-point play, and the Billikens have the lead. So a quick lead exchange to open this ball game. See that unusual floor here at the SIU Arena. The two before is on end. It's not dirty. That's the way it designed. There are just some dark wood pieces in or first of the lighter wood pieces here. St. Louis will open up in man-to-man -man again. Watch Jones inside. He wants the ball in there. It's Wayne Jones gets the shot away and can't stick it. And the kick good. Jones an extremely quick jumper the second time around. Put his shot up and beat everybody else back up the second time. Boy, in St. Louis, Charles Newberry quickly getting it down to the other end and another foul called. And they're leading SIU down court right now. Again, that's something that Rich Aaron's concerned about. Would much prefer to see this game turn into a half-court battle as opposed to the full 94-court battle. Foul on Freddie McSwain, the 6'5 senior from Birmingham, Alabama. Newberry, John Duff, wide open off the baseline as Kevin puts in his first attempt at the side of the glass, but he gets the long rebound himself. That is stripped. Taken away by Sterling Mayhem. Oh, he gave it up nicely that time to McSwain, but the shot won't fall. They've got Robinson down court, and Foots isn't going to get it to him. Probably a good job by Foots that time. Robinson at seven foot. He's not as agile as some other players on that break. Newberry. Duff. St. Louis will set a lot of screens for Foots and Duff to break off those screens to get some shots. Mahan, the 6-1 guard, is on Foots at the moment. Robinson double team takes the shot. The freshman misses. The ball is out of bounds, and the foul is going to go against St. Louis. Jones and Robinson exchanging yeah, words that time. Foots was hooked for the foul. Jones and Robinson exchanging words. And Jones gave him a little tap on the tummy as they came by. 
They're that's, still talking. That's senior versus freshman that time. 18.30 left in the first half. We're just underway. The Salukis lead 4-3. to three. Rick Shipley to Schultz. Or Bush, rather. Down low with the turnaround. Jones shot one fall. Working hard inside is Shipley. He's fouled. They're not going to count the basket. That right. time Shipley just got good inside rebounding position. You're going to watch now. Watch Shipley. He'll come around. Two men will get inside position on Robinson, and he'll reach over and be called for the foul. That's just experience that time on Rick Shipley's part. A seven-foot freshman, Melvin Robinson from St. Louis, Vashon High School. Out front with it, Sterling Mayhem, the 6'1 junior for Southern Illinois. He's going to slow it down, and St. Louis shows him a zone on the inbounds pass. Out of bounds pass, a 2-3 zone for St. Louis. That's McSwain with a basketball. A little slow attacking that zone. Shipley goes for three. Loops it in and out. Jones keeps it alive. Picked up by Mayhem. He's going for three, and that was good. Sterling Mayhem sticks it. Early on, Southern Illinois is controlling the backboards, and that's why they're out to a 7-3 lead. They've done a good job of that this year. They've out-rebounded their opponents by an average of eight a game. Connor taken away by Jones, intended for the freshman. Melvin Robinson inside. The Salukis have the lead in the ball. The Mayan with penetration. Dishes to McSwain back in the lane. And a shot blocked by the freshman Robinson. Foots had it, and he's fouled by Rick Shipley. That's probably a good foul by Shipley because that time St. Louis had the numbers on the break. Probably would have been in good offensive position at the other end. Quick pace start to this basketball game, John. Expected nothing less. Southern Illinois over the long term, they don't want to get in a fast pace up and down game. But early on in spurts, they don't mind running on occasion. Newberry. That's Anthony Ponner. Shipley out covering him at the top of the circle. Newberry rolling around the screen, got it in the lane. He made a quick move to the bucket. Charles Newberry with his first two points. 7-5 Southern Illinois. Well, he got to the basket in a hurry. Mayhan against Henderson. Shipley. Bounced it down inside to Jones. It didn't pick up the pass. The ball is loose on the deck. Mayhan scrambling for it down there with Duff. It'll be a jump ball, and on a possession arrow, St. Louis will get the basketball. A pattern that's occurring early on is that Jerry Jones is doing a good job posting up on the inside, and SIU is getting him the basketball inside. That's a good percentage shot when he's five feet away from the bucket. A moment ago, you saw Rich Grower, the Billiken coach, in his eighth year at St. Louis University. Both he and Rich Heron, longtime high school coaches in their home areas, for talking, getting their shot. Talking to Heron about putting Mayhan at 6-1 on 6-6 Foots, they don't feel that Foots wants to take it inside. Duck shot was blocked by Shipley out of bounds. If Foots continues to work on the perimeter, Mayhan is so quick, he'll cause some problems. If Foots goes inside, they'll switch and put 6-8 Shipley on it. And you get a good look at Shipley, excuse me, Bush that time with nice rejection. That's Foots, and he did get loose inside that time, but it was a loose ball situation, and it come out of the offense, but he gets his first two points in a 7-7 tie here. Bush to Shipley. Gets by Foots, and having trouble with the basketball, it's out of bounds off his foot, and comes back to St. Louis. The Billikens with a chance to go in front again. Puts to Newberry. Boy, Newberry's showing some quickness at that guard position, isn't he? He's extremely quick. You're so concerned about Foots and Duff with his perimeter shooting. If you relax on Charles Newberry, he'll hurt you very quickly. He can really flash into the lane with the basketball. Here's Bonner making a move on Bush, and he's going to put up the off-balance shot. The Wonko came down trying to get the rebound. It's out of bounds. It'll be Southern Illinois basketball. That time Anthony Bonner forced his shot, but he probably wouldn't, wouldn't have wanted to. We have a timeout taken here at SIU with 15.50 left in first half action. St. Louis and Southern Illinois all got it up at seven apiece. 7-7 seven, seven tie with 15.50 left in the first half. You notice the person in the head like an Egyptian over there? This part of Illinois is called Egypt and always has been. A little Egypt down here. And the Saluki is an Egyptian hunting dog. That's where the name of that mascot came from. Both teams on a cold night outside, also cold inside. For those of you wondering about the mascots, the Saluki again, the Egyptian hunting dog. A Billiken is a fellow who's supposed to bring people good luck. There's Dave Bush getting a shot down, his first two. 
6'10 junior from Houston, Illinois. Newberry comes right back and gets penetration again. Again, that's what concerned Rich Heron was that transition game. St. Louis for the second time tonight executing it well. Mahan missed the shot, and Newberry had it, got tripped, hit the deck. Still trying to save it, and does. The Bonner, who came back to help him nicely. That's the key point. Bonner came back to help his man who was in trouble on the floor. Always come back to the ball to help out. Billy comes of St. Louis University with a chance to go back in front. Bonner catching the ball above the circle, right back to Newberry. Newberry hits the deck again, but gets up and saves the ball. Now he needs help to duck. Bonner. Bonner starts the drive, and it's going to be a charging foul. Count the basket and give Anthony Bonner the foul. His fifth point, his first foul of the ball game. Bonner a little too quick that time, but credit Rick Shipley with a nice heads-up play to draw the charge. Again, Bonner goes around Bush. You watch Shipley. He's there. Contact, no doubt about it. Good call by the official. 11-9, St. Louis in the lead right now. Substitution for the Billikens of St. Louis. That's Mike Ivester, a 6'9 senior from Cedar Rapids, Iowa, checking in. He's replaced the seven-footer, the freshman Melvin Robinson, so Rich Grower going to a little smaller lineup right now. That's Jones with a turnaround back shot. Again, Jones getting good inside position, and with good position, they're gonna come good percentage shots that time he buried. Now we've got a whistle blowing down in the lane and a foul. They got Jerry Jones. It'll be his first personal foul. The 6'6 senior got tangled up down in there and commits the foul. Trying to battle for a little inside position. He wanted it at the other end, trying to deny it on the defensive end. Ashraf Amaya, a 6'7 freshman, checks in now for Southern Illinois. And he'll replace Dave Bush, the junior from Houston, Illinois. Inbounds pass to Bonner, contested, but he was able strong enough to just pull the ball out of there. So strong, you never want to bring it down to bring in more hands, but Bonner strong enough to pull it back up. Saluki set the zone, Newberry. Duff, quick pass to the baseline. The Bonner had it knocked out of there by Shipley, but saved by Duff. Now Foots. Newberry looking back to the bench to reset the offense. They're not adjusting to the zone very well. Only on the shot clock. 2-3 zone, but the guards up top are very active. Almost a, a matchup type man-to-man -man situation for the perimeter people. Now Foots goes for a three that doesn't stick for him and picks off his own long rebound down into the corner. He got down there in a hurry. Newberry. St. Louis University, good three-point shooters. As a team, they're shooting 45% from three-point range. That's Bonner missing, getting it back, and stripped for the foul is called. Well, jump ball is called, and the ball will belong to Southern Illinois. And the held ball, the organization Saluki. You're going to see Bonner go up strong, and you're going to see Sterling Mahan at 6-1. He's going to come in and tie up Bonner. He's not afraid to go inside with the big guys. Well, Bonner is showing some strength in there, isn't he? Very strong player. Again, he could become the career leader in points and rebounds before his career is over. At the moment, Bonner and Jones are matched head-to-head -head down low. Jones caught it, kicked it back out. Shipley to McSwain for Southern Illinois. Dean tied at 11. And for three, off the heel of the rim, Jones keeps it alive, but Newberry rebounds it. And up come the Billikens. Duff. SIU and half court man to man, not real aggressive. They want to sag a little bit and help on the inside. Puts is an interesting, intriguing matchup again. Mayhem at 6 1, guarding the 6 6 Kevin Puts. Oh, Newberry with a great move. Well, he never got the shot away. Duff picks it up. He's wide open. He can shoot it, but that one rims in and out. Strong rebound. Well, Maya, the freshman. Mayhem and a blocking play. They got Newberry that time. First foul on Charles Newberry, a 6'3 senior from Chicago's Lindblom Tech. There's Rich Brower. Not very happy, is he? He didn't launch it, but watch Newberry. See, he's still moving. Mayhan still going strong to the basket. Newberry moving, and obvious block ball. You saw Rich Brower, the official over talking to him, cautioning him to calm down, and Brower is really all over him, maybe getting very close to a technical. Ron Zetcher, an official, telling him to calm down over there. He got it. There's a technical foul. Called against the St. Louis bench. Coach Rich Brower whistle for the tee. You can see it coming. You know, early in the game, sometimes that's a coach's ploy to get his team fired up. 
The score tied at 11. We'll see at the end of the first half whether that technical foul fires up St. Louis or not. Sterling Mayhan, the 6'1 junior. We'll see the technical shots. This may not be the technicals. No, they weren't. That was the shooting foul, and now here comes Freddie McSwain to shoot the technicals, the 6'5 senior. I'll tell you, generally, Mayhan just hit two. Generally, you want to keep the same guy that hit the free throws on the line, but they're going to put McSwain in there instead. May not make any difference, but generally you keep the guy that's hot on the line. Well, McSwain is 65 or 73 percent free throw shooter. Mayhan 65. Some difference. Whatever it worked for Rich Aaron, he knew what he was doing. Right? That's exactly right. Rich Aaron is all that matters. He knew what he was doing. They got four free throws. So this could be a four or five point swing on the tee. Free throws would have given the ball back to St. Louis. They're not ready to start action yet. Now Melvin Robinson, the seven-footer, checks back in. And Wester, Ivester sits down. Mike Ivester, a 6'9 senior, will sit down for St. Louis. That's the freshman, the seven-footer, Melvin Robinson, back in for the Billikens. St. Louis has gone to a 2-3 zone, banning the man-to-man. -man. Southern Illinois basketball. Tyrone Bell in the lineup now. Shipley, good catch by Bell and a strong move inside by Amaya. The freshman gets it back and scores. You sure that's a freshman? Well, that time Amaya didn't give up after his initial shot was blocked. Credit him for second effort that time with a goal. Southern Illinois up by six and Anthony Bonner working to reduce it as foul. The basket is in and count it. Well, what a move by Anthony Bonner. He has seven points in the yard going here tonight. That time, Bonner just with a great individual move. He's got Amaya on a little spin move. He's going to get Amaya off his feet. And somehow he's going to be able to get this shot up and in. Great move that time by Anthony Bonner. Bonner had a three-point play earlier tonight. He has a total of seven points in the ballgame. That particular move takes a strong player. He's moving to his left away from the basket. Takes a strong play to get that shot up. Short with a try that time, and that was Jerry Jones rising high in the lane to bring down the rebound for Southern Illinois. 11 44 left in first half action. Southern Illinois by four. 2 3 zone. St. Louis is going to force SIU to put it up from the perimeter. SIU not nearly as good a perimeter shooting team as St. Louis is. Mayhem to Shipley. 22 on the shot clock. Bell to Mayhem. Mayhem backing it way out. 17 on the shot clock. It's going to reset the alignment. Bell, 11 on the shot clock. Shipley. Try to get it down inside. Taken away by Bonner. Gets it up to Duff. Puts his with him. And Bell knocked it loose. And he's going to be called for the walk. Rich Grower is upset again. We have an official timeout. Ladies and gentlemen. We have a timeout taken here as Rich Grower continues to talk to the officials in front of this bench. Timeout with 11.09 left in first half action. We've got a good one going in Carbondale. This telecast is an exclusive presentation of Creative Sports Marketing in association with ESPN. And any use, rebroadcast, or other transmission of this game without the written consent of Creative Sports Marketing and ESPN is prohibited. Early on rebounding, St. Louis out rebounding, SIU by one. Jones with three boards, Bonner with three boards. So both of the big men establishing their presence early. And the Salukis up by four. St. Louis with the basketball. Bonner out on the wing with it. He's drawn the freshman Amaya out with him. Pretty tough defensive assignment for Amaya. Trying to handle Bonner down inside. There's the drive to the baseline. Puts those up a hook shot. And doesn't have a chance, but he was fouled, and he even did a wise thing in getting the shot up there. The foul on Mayhan, his first. The foul is called on Levin Sterling Mayhan. That's the first time that Foots has been able to take him inside like that. St. Louis would like to see Foots more involved in the offense because he's the matchup that concerned Rich Aaron the most. Well, we talked about the matchup. Foot at 6-6, Mayhan at 6-1. Foots has two points so far in this ballgame. As you mentioned, the first time he's taken him low. Let's see if they try to do it again. Puts with three points now. He's a 71% free throw shooter. A 6'6 junior from Chicago's St. Gregory High School. At the Triton Junior College in the Chicago area. Good athlete. 
has good shooting range. A 6'6". Six, six, has that guard mentality, doesn't it? Wants to shoot it from the outside. Very versatile player. Two-point lead to Southern Illinois now as Sterling Mayhem sets the attack. Rick Shipley. Bell. Amaya. To the baseline. Mayhem in and out. And that's Bonner with the rebound. Now at this end of the floor, Jones is defending against the freshman, Melvin Robinson. At the other end, Bonner has been taking Jerry Jones head up. I say he's done a good job of picking up the St. Louis players as they run off the screen. They really have not been able to get open for the easy shot. That's a five-second closely guarded call. Newberry just couldn't shake foot that time and get away from it. Well, that time St. Louis was unable to get their offense into gear. Credit SIU's defense that time with the confusion. Southern Illinois up to with the basketball. There are the turnovers in the ball game. Billikens one more than the Salukis of Southern Illinois. Southern Illinois from the Missouri Valley Conference. St. Louis from the Midwest Collegiate Conference. Two schools located just a two-hour drive apart. That's the freshman. Amaya had a strip. Brought it down low and ducked the guard and took it away for St. Louis. There's Bonner going to the bucket. Woo! Oh, Anthony Bonner just blew by everybody and racked up his ninth point. That one tied the game. Again, transition game, and you got a great look at the athletic ability of Anthony Bonner. Did he get there in a hurry? Pretty good athletic ability on the St. Louis team. That's Bell down low. Now Shipley. Knocked out of his hands by Newberry. It'll be Southern Illinois basketball. Dave Bush, a 6'10 junior, checking back into the lineup now. He's from Hoopston East Lynn High School. He replaced the freshman, Oshraf Amaya. Good swing. Bush, Bell, little fake on. Duff takes the jump shot off the heel of the rim. Bonner clears another rebound. And Newberry's got foots up court, having trouble handling it, trying to save it. And Bonner saves it, but it's picked off by SIU. And here come the Salukis, five on three at the moment. McSwain takes Duff baseline. The shot won't go. And Southern Illinois having some tough shooting luck right now. The zone's really causing them some problems. Just can't seem to find a basket. And St. Louis has done a good job of, of keeping that ball out of the inside, forcing everything pretty much from the perimeter. We've got a 17-17 tie with 8.58 left in the first half. This is Bonner up high. Down inside to Robinson and just softly over the wind with it. Melvin Robinson, the seven-foot freshman. Nice town high school. Nice pass over the top that time to Melvin Robinson. Billikens have gone back up by two. Shipley, nice pass down inside. And the bucket by Jerry Jones, his sixth point. Good feed. First time Southern Illinois has been able to get the ball inside that 2-3 zone. Saluki's now 7 for 17 from the floor in this game. St. Louis a little better at 8 for 16. And the whistle stops play. The foul out on the wing. That's... Tyrone Bell, the freshman from Evanston, Illinois, with his first foul. 28 left in the first half and a 19 all tie. Newberry will go to the line. Newberry's quickness again created that foul. As you see, Southern Illinois, seven fouls that puts St. Louis in the one and one. Now substitutions again for Southern Illinois. They're going to get Sterling Mahan, the junior from Maywood, Illinois, back in. And also coming off the Saluki bench is Kelvin Lawrence, a 6'4 sophomore from Loosedale, Mississippi, George County High School. There's Newberry, finally going to get a chance to shoot the free throws. He's a senior from Chicago. Went to Belleville, Illinois Junior College. Free throw won't drop. McSwain. Comes up to Duff, then picks up the dribble. Mahan back to McSwain. That's a two if he gets it. Doesn't get it. Rookie still not shooting well. Jones with a jump hook. No. Bush saves it, throws it up, and got it. Oh, what a shot by Dave Bush. He was about to travel and just got rid of it. Smart play that time. Dave Bush, a role player, really knows what his job is. He doesn't try to do too much. Stays within his abilities. That one got the crowd a bit excited. Down low, Foots. Foots again inside. Again, if Sterling Mahan is taken inside, that's where Foots' superior height advantage will really be a big plus for St. Louis. Mahan giving up five inches when they get down there. Southern Illinois attacking the St. Louis zone. A 21-21 tie. 7.40 left in the first half. Biggest lead so far has been six points. A lead to Southern Illinois. 
Long try, won't drop. For Lawrence, that's Jerry Jones. He got up to six. Eight points for Jerry Jones in the Jones Bonner matchup. A good one so far. Jones has eight, Bonner nine. Everything we expected to be both power players inside. A lot of rebounds and points early for both teams. Bonner working on Bush, gives it up to Newberry. Now Foots comes off a screen. Bangs in a McSwain, throws up the shot, and a foul is. No, there was no whistle. The player's expecting a whistle. Well, they all stopped. They thought they heard one. I thought I did too. Heard something that was close to a whistle if it wasn't in fact a whistle. It stopped action. Duff. Anthony Bonner. Newberry Foots coming off the Bonner screen gets the shot off and doesn't drop it. That ball's still loose. So Duff's is going to pick it up in the corner. Something stopping action down at the end of the floor. They stopped twice down there. Newberry. Southern Illinois by two. That's the freshman down inside. And count the bucket. A foul is called. Melvin Robinson got his fourth point. And boy, Rich Heron is really upset. He wanted a travel wing call down there. He felt that Robinson shifted his feet down low. Get a good look at it. Very good little dance. A little bit in the NBA. That's good. But at any rate, Robinson again beginning to become more active down low. If Robinson and Bonner can become aggressive in low, it would be a lot of creating a lot of problems for SIU. You saw Rick Shipley checking back, back in, replacing Jerry Jones now for Southern Illinois. The freshman, Melvin Robinson. 8 for 11 at the line this year. Five points tonight for Melvin Robinson. Time out here in Carbondale, Illinois, with a good basketball game going. 6:29 left in our first half. And a one-point lead to the Billikens at the moment. We established the scene for you. We're in Carbondale, Illinois, at SIU Arena. 24-23 St. Louis late in the first half. You can see an early packed house here. John Albright, they weren't expecting that big a crowd, but with the temperatures here in the Midwest just plunging to below zero, they canceled another number of high school games tonight. And great basketball fans that they are in Southern Illinois, they just came on over here and filled up this house to see a good college game. It's one of the few cases where the college will benefit from the high school problems because their very loyal fans would have chosen to go to the high school game. Always been a strong high school basketball area throughout the state of Illinois, really, but boy, for years and years, high school teams in this part of the state just dominated the scene in Illinois. This area of the state known as Egypt with great basketball tradition. Duff. And the foul is called. That time... They got Anthony Jones, a senior from St. Louis. And the thing to put Southern Illinois on the map was when they won the NIT back at the end of the 67 season when Jack Hartman was coaching here. And on that day, Carbondale High School played for the Illinois State Championship. Southern Illinois, the Salukis, Carbondale High School, the Terriers, and a store here in town had a marquee up that said basketball has gone to the dogs. Well, that afternoon, Southern Illinois beat Marquette to win the NIT and really put this school at, at that time was somewhat unknown on the basketball map. Carbondale didn't fare that well that night. They lost the state championship game. But one and a two is not bad. Nope, not bad at all. Jack Hartman coached here from for a dozen years. You know who they beat in that NIT tournament? They beat St. Peter's, Duke, and Rutgers, and then Marquette by 15 in the championship game. That's Freddie McSwain picking up his third point of the night. Substitution now, St. Louis getting Vincent Smith in the game, a 6'3 sophomore and a good athlete. Newberry is going to take a breather. They don't lose much quickness when they make that substitution. Smith, very, very quick player, actually started for a lot of the season last year. McSwain gets them both. He's four for four at the free throw line. And Southern Illinois in front with 5.47 left in the game. SIU with a 2-2-1. Three-quarter court press. Surprise St. Louis, and they turned it over. Chuck Neal, one thing I said left in the game. It's left in the first half, and the press paid the dividend. That's on St. Louis' surprise. First time that SIU has thrown any type of pressure against them, and they didn't recognize it. Well, Mahan took an off-balance shot, and the Salukis lose the ball. So St. Louis down by a point, and now Mahan's going to be called for a foul, and not a good foul at all in backcourt. It's not a smart foul because St. Louis already in the one and one. There's Rich Heron. For 29 years, a high school coach. 
Played at a small school in high school here in Southern Illinois. His brother Ron, in fact, took over his high school job to continue the tradition. Foots now with seven points tonight. From St. Gregory High School in Chicago. Rebound and a strong one to Freddie McSwain for Southern Illinois. The game tied at 25 all. Approaching halftime, 5.26 left in the first half. McSwain working in the circle, off balance jump shot. Not a good shot at all. No, when that time McSwain was still floating. He never went straight up with his shot, still floating the shot, not even close. Anthony Vonner doing a strong job on the boards again for St. Louis. He has nine points, averaging 18 points and 13 rebounds a game. There's the steal. McSwain against Smith, and Smith fouls him. Vincent Smith's first foul. I'm just going to deny McSwain the easy two points. Anthony Bonner with six rebounds, John, to go at, with those nine points. You can look at McSwain as he explodes. See the good reach in that time by Vincent Smith. Again, if you're going to make that foul, make sure there's no chance for the offensive player to get that three-point possibility. Melvin Robinson back in the game for St. Louis University. Jerry Jones is back in for Southern Illinois. It's Duff that Robinson replaced. That's an interesting substitution. Duff. Is 6 3. Robinson is 7 footer. The guard coming out. Interesting story on Duff. Really hadn't played much his first two years at St. Louis. The first game, Rich Grower wasn't happy with the situation. He decided he just put Duff in, see what he could do. He started ever since. <laughs> Found out what he could do. He could play, I guess. He's a good shooter. Guy that's going to take advantage of an opportunity. Well, you got to like the story. McSwain hits again. He's 6 for 6 at the free throw line. The Salukis. Back up by two, 458 left in first half action. Again, here comes that three-quarter, 2-2-1. Two, two, it's a containment press. For the second time, St. Louis does a poor job of attacking it. Shipley trips over Bonner, hits the deck, and it's going to come out Billy Cunn advantage. Bonner slams it at home at the other end. And Rich Heron is upset. He thought there was a foul at midcourt. There definitely was contact. 11 points now for Anthony Bonner. Reset the 45 second shot clock. 4 34 left in first half action. The game is tied at 27. St. Louis made a bad pass and came out very well. There's Jerry Jones scoring his 10th point of the half. A yeah, nice pass that time. Freddie McSwing with good recognition got the easy pass inside. Vincent Smith. Jones. Smith going to the wing. McSwain right with him. Take it back high to Foots, and Mahan is still with him, giving up five inches to it. Again, out here is not the problem. It's when Foots works around and gets inside that the problem occurs. Oh. Break here for St. Louis. Jones had thrown it away, and Mahan simply surprised by the ball, and it bounced off of him. There's Rich Heron, the Southern Illinois coach. He's, he is a battler, a very competitive person. Substitution now for St. Louis. Mike Divester in the lineup, replacing the seven-footer, Melvin Robinson, coming out of there. George Wallace back in also for St. Louis. Anthony Jones for the Billikens. St. Louis down to 358 left in the first half. Wallace against McSwain. Mayhem with a steal. Took it away from Foots. And and a foul is going to be called against Wallace. George Wallace's first foul. Again, a good defensive play. You see the pass right there. Mahan reads it perfectly. And it's a foot race between Mahan and Wallace. Wallace is going to come back and make sure he breaks it up. Mahan with a good intelligent play. Great anticipation here. And again, you get a good look at Mahan and his leaping ability. He was going up to put that one down with authority. Wallace came in, picked up the foul. John either was expecting contact there and didn't get it or couldn't decide whether to dunk it or lay it up. He got a little out of shape after he got up there. Now make up your mind. Don't have any, whatever your initial thought is, generally that's the one thing you should go with. If you're going to lay it up, go ahead and throw it off the glass. If you're going to dunk it, go up with authority. See Sterling Mahan wearing that number 11? The reason for it, he went to the same high school as Isaiah Thomas. It's the second free throw. We have a timeout. 3.51 left in our first half. At the moment, it's Southern Illinois by three over St. Louis. Okay. 
finish your story. Southern Illinois up by three over St. Louis. 3.51 left in first half action. Interesting flavor to this game. St. Louis, of course, the city school. Southern Illinois in Carbondale, Illinois, a smaller town in Southern Illinois. And look at the two coaches. Rich Grower grew up in St. Louis. Rich Heron grew up in a small town, Bridgeport, Illinois. Rich Grower coached at DeSmet High School in St. Louis. Rich Heron for 29 years, a high school coach at Benton. Now they coach at these colleges. And look at the starters. St. Louis has two from Chicago, two from St. Louis, one from a St. Louis suburb. Southern Illinois has three starters from small towns, Centralia, Hoopston, and Carrier Mills, and two starters from small suburbs in Chicago. So there's a definite city-country flavor to this game here tonight, John. But there's also a similarity. Both coaches inherited programs and tough tasks that they had to rebuild these programs. Both coaches have done an outstanding job and met last year in the NIT. They have their love of basketball and their resuscitation of their respective programs very much in common. With the small town kid against the city kid, the small town coach inheriting a major college program, as did the city high school coach. One other difference, Rich Grower had one year as a major college assistant at the University of Missouri before coming back to St. Louis to take over a program that was really down and really reviving. SIU has gone to a 2-3 zone. That time St. Louis very patient, attacked it, got the ball inside to Ivester. Ivester hits two, the 6-9 senior from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. One point lead to Southern Illinois. Saluki basketball. In the middle of the lane, that's Jones working hard, throws it up softly, can't get it, but tipped out where Mahan's going to pick it off and throw up an off-balance shot that's going to stick. Sterling Mahan has eight. The flashing penetration that time by Mahan was able to get it up for the two points. 2.43 left in first half action here. Foots with a spinning move, shoots over Mahan and comes up short, and the ball belongs to the Salukis. Mahan's going to push it up. Salukis by three. Cross court to McSwain. That's Rick Shipley, and he got it. That's a three for Rick Shipley, a 6'8 junior from Centralia, Illinois. He is the most complete basketball player for Coach Rich Heron. Coach Heron feels that he's the most underrated player on the team and maybe the most underrated player in the Missouri Valley Conference. A slip that results in a turnover. McSwain makes the move on Foots and scores. Eight-point lead for Southern Illinois, their biggest lead of the night. And Rich Brower wants time out to try to stop the leading right here. Look at the crowd in Carbondale. Temperature is supposed to go to 10 below outside tonight, and the wind chill to 30 below with about four inches of snow on the ground. But you'll never know it in here tonight. Great college basketball atmosphere. Everybody has decided if it's going to be cold outside, well, let's go somewhere where we can all get excited and create some energy. Going to get a good look at the defensive play, the heads up play. Mayhan originally has it. He's going to say, Swain, you take it. Swain's going to take it hard. Foots is going to back off. And it's the defense that's creating the offense. Southern Illinois has thrown that 2-2-1 a couple of times against St. Louis. They have not recognized it, and their pressure up top has created, you see, 11 St. Louis turnovers in the first half. Southern Illinois doing a good job with only six so far in the first half. The Billy Convinch. Tomorrow night, more NCAA basketball. Got a backyard battles going on on ESPN the last couple of nights, and they continue tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, it's Rutgers against Princeton and Georgia Tech against Georgia. Last night on ESPN, we had Creighton against Nebraska, Kansas State against Tulsa, two schools close together, Idaho against Washington State, schools eight miles apart. Tonight, St. Louis and Southern Illinois, kind of schools two, a two-hour drive apart. Then tomorrow night, Rutgers and Princeton, Georgia and Georgia Tech. It's backyard battles battles on ESPN and NCAA basketball this week. Well, not a whole lot more time left in December for non-conference games before January, which starts, which means conference battles. Eight-point lead, Southern Illinois, the biggest lead established by either team here tonight. Newberry back in the lineup for the Billikens, trying to reestablish the St. Louis offense. Jones coming out high to take the pass. Smith flashing to the circle, puts it up in traffic, and Bonner with another rebound. Good work in traffic, and Anthony Bonner knocks it down. Strong move that time by Anthony Bonner inside. Actually was able to get the ball over to Salukis and was able to operate inside effectively. 11 points, Anthony Bonner. Shipley goes on the far wing with it. Griffin, now the near corner. McSwain shakes loose, skip pass, it shots up and won't go. Southern Illinois 
couldn't quite come up with it. Now they're going to give the ball to the Billikens. And Rich Heron really upset. That's Rich Gower, the St. Louis coach. He loves to call, needless to say. Substitution now for the Billikens of St. Louis. Big change. They're going to give it to SIU. The referees discussed it with one another, and they're going to give the basketball to Southern Illinois. Another substitution now for the Salukis. Kelvin Lawrence comes into the ball game. Replaces Jerry Jones. And now Dave Bush checks back in for the Salukis. You saw St. Louis get Jeff Luck to field in there. The Billikens going to counter with a small town Illinois player of their own. He's from a tiny town, Oakville. St. Louis still in the 2-3 zone. SIU recognize they're going to call their man offense to operate against it. Tyrone Bell, McSwain, Shipley on the baseline. Try to drop it down inside. And they're trying to save it, but it's picked off by Duff for St. Louis. He's trying to get it all sorted out. Finds Bonner down at the baseline. Newberry. 31 seconds left in the half. 30 on the shot clock. St. Louis with the basketball down by a half dozen points. Newberry, Duff. 21 left in the half. Newberry comes outside. Billikens playing for the last shot, down by six. Newberry slices down the lane and loses the ball. Three seconds left in the half. McSwain's going to get a good shot, and he can't drop it. And a strong half of basketball comes to an end. Here in Carbondale, 37-31. Southern Illinois has taken the lead over St. Louis University here in Carbondale this evening. We're at halftime. Let's get back to Chris Fowler with scores and highlights. All right, thank you, Chris. It has been a good first half of basketball here at John Albright. Tight ball game. Eight points, the biggest separation. Southern Illinois had an eight-point lead. They're up by six of the break. They've really had the lead throughout most of the first half. Well, Southern Illinois surprised St. Louis with that 2-2-1 two -two three-quarter press. St. Louis didn't do a good job of attacking it. Coughed off the ball a couple times and the turnovers that's been the difference in the first half we'll take a look at first half statistics here again 37 31 is where we are and here's how we got here you see both teams again siu seven more attempts but both teams shooting very well from the free throw line rebounds very close again the turnovers that's been the difference and the steal category siu able to come up with eight steals in the first half siu's press paid some dividends for the Salukis late in the first half, really. It was kind of a seesaw battle down through the middle part of the half, and then Rich Heron threw that little press on there, and it, it, it wasn't all that tough, it didn't seem like, but it did create some problems. Surprise. Well, your point guard has got to recognize what's going on there, then get your team in the correct offense to break that. Gets the 2-2-1, two -two you can throw it in the middle and quickly kick it out. That time, St. Louis failed to recognize that and turn the ball over. You can see that this is not a real bitter rivalry between these two schools, but the basis for a good rivalry, 27th meeting between the two teams, they're tied 13-13 in the series. St. Louis won big last year, but there's some uh, there's an intensity in this ball game tonight. Well, both teams have a lot of long-time tradition. They go back a long ways. Both teams are very proud of their basketball heritage. And being as close as they are, yes, it can turn back into a good rivalry. Belly guns of St. Louis are back on court here now. Southern Illinois is still back in the locker room. And again at halftime, the Salukis from Southern Illinois up by six. And we'll be back with more at halftime. Can you name these French works of art? The painting, Renoir, the wine. ESPN's NCAA Basketball, St. Louis at Southern Illinois. It's brought to you by Levi's 505 and 506 jeans. And by Pronto, featuring quality auto parts at lower prices. That's a nice scene, isn't it, on a very cold night in Southern Illinois, a packed house here at SIU Arena, and they're seeing a good basketball game. There's the score, 37-31, and here's your storyline on this basketball game, John Albright. Well, the key again for St. Louis, 11 turnovers in the first half, but Anthony Bonner, everything we expected, big half for him. Southern Illinois head coach Rich Heron felt that his team had to shoot a very good percentage. Cold in the first half, but they did a good job getting some second shots. Jerry Jones with a big half for his counterpart of the power game. Well, we talked about the Bonner-Jones matchup in a pregame. It's been 
been a good one so far. Anthony Bonner has shown us some spectacular stuff like this. At 6'8", you get a great feel for his total athletic ability with a play like that. Freddie McSwain answered with eight points for Southern Illinois. There's Jerry Jones coming off the bench, and again, he had the ten points and the seven rebounds. There's McSwain. Again, he had eight points, a 6'5", senior for the Southern Illinois Ball Club. We, talk, we talked a lot about Kevin Foots and Sterling Mahan. That matchup, Foots only two out of seven in the first half, seven points. So credit Rich Heron and his move to start 6-1 Sterling Mahang, Mahan against Foots. Again, if Foots takes the ball inside, look for SIU to make a switch, put Shipley at 6-8 on him. If Foots continues to operate on the outside, Mahan will guard him. Well, Foots only took it there a couple of times in first half action, so we'll see what we get here. Second half underway, St. Louis down six with the basketball. And the crowd at SIU on their feet for the start of the second half. That's Foots against Mahan again. SIU opens up in their customary half-court man-to-man. Smart move that time by Newberry. If he touches that ball and goes in the backcourt, that's a violation. He waited till it was clear and picked it up. There's another interesting matchup now. Shipley is guarding Duff. Shipley is 6'8", and Duff is 6'3". Again, Shipley, the most complete basketball player on the SIU team, can do a lot of different things for Rich Aaron. Steal by St. Louis, puts up to Duff, wide open for it, and gets it. So St. Louis coming back quickly in the second half. In that transition game, Rich Brower talked to his troops, I'm sure, about pushing this into a 94-foot game, not operating so much in the half court. St. Louis chooses to come back in the 2-3 zone to start the second half. Mahan, three won't fall, and taken right back up by Dave Bush. He has a half dozen points. Newberry, St. Louis down four. Anthony Bonner. Bonner now with 15 points for the Billikens. That's Newberry. Duff. There's that another intriguing matchup. Duff five, giving Duff giving up five inches to Shipley at that end. And Bonner is fouled. He took it to the bucket. The foul on Dave Bush, a 6'10 junior from Hoops in Illinois. Anthony Bonner is too quick for Bush. You see a little head fake. Bush goes for just a little bit, just out of position. That cost him the foul right there. Bonner able to take that little opening and creating that move. I must need some Hoops in Illinois. Hoops in Illinois. Hoops in a good name for a basketball player from town. Hoops in Hoop, there might be something in there. Of course, in the southern part of the states, uh, Hoop means uh, basketball. Yep. Hoops it is. Anthony Bonner, 15 points in this game. He's one for three at the line. He's been a good free thrower this year, 77% shooter. And he comes right back and sticks that one. Now with 18-29 left in the game, three-point lead to Southern Illinois and Mayhem. Where's the timeline? St. Louis back in that zone. Swain drops it inside. Jones goes to work. Long rebound picked off by Bush. Now Jones again. Spins, shoots over the freshman, can't drop it, and this time Duff will clear it for St. Louis. Jones got two cracks at it, but couldn't score. Again, two good penetrations that time by SIU to get the pass inside low to Jones. Those shots will fall. Newberry. But Jones and Bonner are a lot of life, aren't they? Both power players, both players not afraid to mix it up, and they're both seniors. Duff. Newberry. Newberry gets McSwain into the circle, gives it up to Duff. A three won't stick and a strong rebound to Jones. He hit the deck and he's hurt. He grabs his foot and ankle, and Jones is shaken up. He twisted an ankle coming down. He's on his feet. The officials had stopped play to make sure he's all right. And he's not even going to look at the bench. He's limping, as you can see, coming up court. And they're going to substitute for him right now. Kind of get a good look. You see Jones come in. See, that tangle up that time with Robinson went straight down. Generally, if you've got a sprained ankle, you won't be able to walk it off as quickly as he's been able to do. He's going to check out with the trainer get a good look at it. Jones, I sure hope he'll be back in tonight. Six rebounds. Again, a very good night so far for Jerry Jones. He's not even going to sit down right now. He's standing there talking to his trainer, Ed Thompson. He's a senior from Country Club Hills, Illinois, Hillcrest High School. Has really only played a year and a half of college basketball. Lost some time in transferring. That's a three-point try, but Mayhan and it won't drop for him. And Bonner, there's another rebound. 
Anthony Bonner having yet another big night for St. Louis. The Newberry to the bucket. Oh, he missed the shot, but Robinson right back there for the stick back. Melvin Robinson has seven points. Oh, Newberry's quick. Newberry that. just exploded by his man that time. Missed the easy layup, but give Robinson credit for being right there to put it in. St. Louis back within one. Shipley drops it inside, and a foul is going to be called. As they got the ball down inside to the freshman, Oshraf Amaya. You see a nice pass by Shipley inside to Amaya. Bonner call for the foul. You see his hands when he, he had him straight up and down, but he moved him. He broke that vertical up and down movement. That's where the foul was called. He'd have been fine if he just kept his hands in that straight up and down position. It would not have been a foul. Now Dave Bush comes out of the lineup for Southern Illinois. And in it is Kelvin Lawrence, a 6'4 sophomore. Amaya. Real good. He has three points. The freshman from Oak Park, Illinois, Walter Lutheran High School. Second free throw long for Osraf Amaya. Two-point lead, Southern Illinois. Well, the Saluki's lead has never been big, but they've really led for a goodly part of the ball game. There's a reverse layup failing to drop. And a foul down inside. Did they get Bonner again? I believe they did. And that will be his third foul. It's a big call. You're going to see Foots just exploded by Mayhan that time. Good help by Amaya. You see Bonner coming over the back that time. That's a big foul. That's... It's his third personal foul. He got two of them in a hurry. And now here comes Jerry Jones right back in the ballgame for Southern Illinois. So that twisted ankle did not keep him out long at all. He has 10 points in this game tonight, all of them in the first half. Anthony Bonner is going to stay in there with the three fouls. We have 16-37 left to play. Good range, puts up the big three-point shot. The second three of the night, Shipley has eight points. And the Salukis by five. Bonner with a strong move in the lane, and he's fouled. That one whistled against Calvin Lawrence, the sophomore. With Bonner, quick move by Bonner. Bonner at 6'8", and as strong as he is, just too much of a match for Lawrence. See Lawrence completely out of position. A couple of times he could have been whistled for that foul, but again, you get a great look at the agility of Anthony Bonner. You know he's a strong physical player, but I don't think you recognize just how quick and how agile he is. Anthony Bonner. 16 points and nine rebounds in this game. Make it 17 points. And now he's three for five on the free throw line. A senior from St. Louis, Vashon High School. He's Mr. Basketball in Missouri his senior year. Played in Europe last year with the NIT All-Stars. McSwain rebounds the missed free throw. Saluki's by four, 16-12 left in the game. McSwain from long range, and he draws it. Buddy McSwain has 11. The range that time, McSwain shooting over the zone that time to St. Louis. Puts off balance, but hits the fadeaway jump shot, and Kevin Foots has nine. They hand right back against Newberry. Shipley. It's his third three of the night. That time St. Louis got out of the zone, went to man-to-man, -to -man, but failed to pick up Shipley, and he burned it for another three-point shot. The Salukis match the biggest lead of the game. They're up by eight with 15.30 to play. Newberry for three, tries to answer it. Low stick, Shipley rebounds. Fires it out of there. The outlet pass to Mayhem. And the Salukis running. He's going to give it back to Jones, who can't handle it. Out of bounds, and the ball belongs to St. Louis. And the Slookies did not run the break well at all that time. They had numbers and couldn't convert it. Timeout taken here at SIU Arena in Carbondale, Illinois. We have 15-18 left in a good college basketball match. Southern Illinois has now matched the biggest lead in this ball game. They're up over eight. Up over St. Louis by eight. NFL football coming up Sunday night on ESPN, and the Raiders hope it's payback time. They've dropped their last three contests to Seattle, including a 24-20 heartbreaker back in October. Raiders staying a step ahead of Kansas City's Chiefs in the race for a playoff spot. Three-point field goal range. St. Louis hasn't hit one. They've missed five tries. And Southern Illinois doing well with it. 
hot shooting like that is the best way to get a team out of the zone defense. SIU is shooting St. Louis out of that zone defense. Rick Shipley has hit three of those three-point buckets. Newberry the lob, and it's stuffed by the freshman Melvin Robinson. Yeah, he has nice. If you wonder why Robinson wouldn't call for a technical for hanging on the rim, you can hold on to the rim to prevent injury. And that time there was an SIU player right in front of him, no technical. St. Louis ran that lob coming out of the timeout. Good coaches get good plays after timeouts. Rich Brower executing, and his team does a nice job on the floor. Swain's shot let and go. Newberry right back for St. Louis. Billy comes down by six. Bonner throws the lob inside again, and Robinson couldn't get it to drop. He was fouled. Boy, if that rolls in, that's a big bucket for St. Louis. They're down six at the moment. Well, what St. Louis has done, they're pulling Bonner out top. You have a tendency to relax with Bonner as active as he's been inside all night long. With Bonner out top, you have a, you have a tendency to relax, and they're kicking the ball over the players to Robinson, who at seven feet has got a pretty good shooting percentage looking down at the goal. He's a freshman from St. Louis. He can run the court. Pretty good-looking athlete, John. He's going to be a good basketball player. He's 240 pounds, so he already comes into the collegiate game with a college body. He's got to learn how to be a little more physical, a little more dominant player, but hey, he's got three more years to do that. And Rich Grower will tell you that he's going to give the freshman a lot of minutes. He's aiming toward the end of the season with him, and he knows that he's going to just keep improving. The nice thing about Robinson, a freshman, he's got a senior in Anthony Bonner who he can look to for a lot of experience to learn how to watching Bonner play. Melvin Robinson now has 11 points tonight, one over his average. Four-point lead Southern Illinois. 14-17 left in this game. Long try from the corner, won't drop, and it flies over the rim. Kelvin Lawrence shot is out of bounds. That time Lawrence hesitated, was going to put it up, then said no, then decided to put it up. Generally, if you get, if you go with whatever your first premonition is, that's usually the best way to go. Once you start to hesitate, you wind up aiming the ball, and it's really tough to shoot it like that. Duff, Shipley all over him. Newberry defended by McSwain. We've got a whistle and a foul on McSwain. But McSwain draws his second foul. He shook his head. He knew he'd foul him. He's trying to slow down the explosive Charles Newberry. Competitive basketball game here in Carbondale tonight. Two teams used to be in the same conference, no longer St. Louis in the Midwest Collegiate Conference now. Southern Illinois still a member of the Missouri Valley. Saluki's trying to get off to their best start in 50 years. They are 6-0 right now. Anthony Potters had a big night already for St. Louis. Working here against Lawrence, puts up a shot and gets it. Oh, Anthony Bonner. Again, you get a good look at Bonner in the one-on-one -on -one mode that time. Lawrence could do nothing to stop that shot. Actually, pretty good defense that time by Lawrence. Just a good offensive play that time by Bonner. 19 points now for Anthony Bonner. Season high is 32. That's also his career high. Lawrence inside Jerry Jones. Triple team foul call. Pick one. You got three of them. I'm going to say Newberry. He's pleading his case. He's pleading his Galata, so he's probably the one that got called for the foul. Watch the St. Louis defense collapse once Jerry Jones gets the ball. And so look at that. Four players right around the ball that time. Newberry's going to be called for reaching in. But you see the respect that they have for Jerry Jones and his inside ability. Everybody collapsed once Jones got the ball. See the leadership there? Anthony Bonner just grabbed Newberry and pulled him away from the official. Now we've got a little tangle going in the lane. Jones and Bonner are nose to nose down in there. Duff steps in and says something to somebody. The officials did a great job at getting into this thing in a hurry. He's all right. Rich Brower, the Pelican coach, looking on. So is Rich Heron, Southern Illinois coach. Foot shot, won't go. Tip by Jerry Jones, and he has a dozen points. Tyrone Bell missed the long shot, and Jones tipped it in. Saluki's by four again. That's how Foots had good position down low. Set himself up and forced Tyrone Bell to come around, and he sealed him off. Bell tried to run through it and call for his third personal foul. And see finals from the NBA coming in now. Cleveland. Miami over Minnesota. Lakers again. Celtics still having trouble finding the combination. Here we have a four-point lead, Southern Illinois, St. Louis with a basketball. Bonner going to work on Bush, throws up a shot, he's fouled. Jerry Jones. Jerry Jones is going to be called for the foul again. Bonner just too quick for Bush in the open court. 
you see one-on-one -on -one basketball right here. Bonner goes right by Bush. Jones has to come over to help out. He's called for the foul. And Anthony Bonner in a one-on-one -on -one situation, just too powerful and too quick for SIU to stop. Anthony Moss saw those hockey scores. You can step right outside the arena here in Carbondale and play hockey from here to the Colorado border if you wanted to. It's just nothing but ice in the Midwest right now. Snow, cold. 51-48, Southern Illinois. Anthony Bonner now with 20 points. And make it 21. Substitutions now for St. Louis. Jeff Luchtefeld back in the ball game. Southern Illinois. Sterling Mayhem. Mayhem back came in. back in. I was trying to find him. There he is, Mayhem. St. Louis feel comfortable in that 2-3 zone. They've gotten back in the basketball game. Two-point difference. Feel very comfortable in the 2-3 zone. Shipley couldn't get that one to drop. And a strong rebound. Bonner again for St. Louis. He continues to play very strong basketball. Foots takes Mayhem baseline and winds up shooting it off balance and then tipping it in. Great second effort that time by Kevin Foots again at 6-6. He's going over 6-1 Sterling Mayhem. And SIU is going to get a timeout after that. The Billikens have come back to tie this game again. We now have 12-14 left in this contest. And at the break, it's St. Louis 51, Southern Illinois 51. We have a 51-51 tie in Carbondale, Illinois, with 12-14 left in the ballgame. Well, if you had somebody to shoot a free throw late in the ballgame, this fellow working on the Southern Illinois radio broadcast tonight, Greg Sterick, the all-time NCAA leader when he played here for the Sloke, shot nearly 93% from the line. He's from right down the road in Marion, Illinois. Well, 70% is considered a pretty good benchmark. 92%, that's exceptional. For a career. Think he took any confidence up to the line when he went up there? Game tied here. Low scoring game, 51-51, 11.55 to play. Near turnover, but Bush picks it up and capitalizes. Dave Bush has eight points. Again, Bush, a, a role player, has been at the right time, doesn't try to get outside of his abilities, just a garbage player, but coming up with his eight points. Newberry having trouble with it, and a foul's gonna be called on Tyrone Bell. A foul he really didn't need to commit. Rich Grower, the St. Louis coach, down at the other end. Rich Heron from Southern Illinois just as animated that all the players and the officials are down at the opposite end of the court from him. We're in the one and one. That's what the question was right there. The answer, the question was, are they? The answer is yes. Fourth personal foul now on Tyrone Bell. Freddie McSwain now will check back in the lineup. A lot of time, Southern Illinois. Still a lot of time to go in the game. 11:42. St. Louis already in the one and one. SIU. They've got four more fouls to go before they're in the one and one. Tyrone Bell sits down with 11:42 left in the game. Bell's new very to the line. Picks up his fifth point of the night. 6'3 senior from Chicago, from Lindblom Tech. The point guard for this club. Well, he's shown us some quickness and athletic ability tonight, hasn't he? Just an explosive player. Really can take off very, very explosively. Half a dozen for Charles Newberry and another tie at 53 all. And this good matchup continues here in Carbondale tonight. McSwain, Shipley, quick ball movement. Bush, Shipley. Attacking the zone. Trying to swing the ball. Mayhem. Tried to reverse it. Couldn't get McSwain. Now the skip pass nearly intercepted. McSwain picked it off. And again, Bush picking up a loose ball. SIU has been unable to attack it at all. They've used up half of their 45-second allotment and have yet to get it in there to attack it. Finally do, and they get the right guy to attack it. Very patient that time, and Jones flashed open and got an easy two. They got it down to him. Jones has 14 points. Newberry trying to answer. That one won't fall, and high to clean the class is Freddie McSwain. Two-point lead, Southern Illinois, 10-54 to play. Shipley for three. That's his fourth three-point goal of the night. He has 14 points in this ballgame. Well, if you're in the zone for St. Louis, you've got to communicate where Rick Shipley is because he's killing you in the three-point range. Brooks missed the drive, and Jones rebounds. And here come the Salukis with a five-point lead. And look at the crowd. They are rising to their feet here in Carbondale. Look at the coach, Chris Harris.
wouldn't drop for Shipley. And Robinson, the big freshman, rebounds to Foot. Foot gives it back to Newberry. 10 14 left in the contest. This is a possession where you'd really like to get Anthony Bonner involved if you could. St. Louis needs a basket to break this run by the Salukis. Newberry hit the deck and he's out of bounds. His hand went out of bounds that time. It sure did. Good call by Ron Zetcher. Ron Zetcher was right on top of it, looking right down at the out of bounds strike. Now, where that maroon is, look at his hand. See it right there? That's out of bounds. Good call by Ron Zetcher. Rather unusual out of bounds. Not a stripe, really. It's an out of bounds panel where that maroon color meets that dark basketball court, but Zetcher standing right on top of it made a good call. So look, he's up five with the ball. And they turn it over immediately. Jones can't catch the pass down low. Billikens from St. Louis get it back. St. Louis has turned it over 15 times. Southern Illinois, 13 now. Anthony Bonner against Bush gave the ball up to Newberry. 9-39 left in this game. St. Louis down five. Luck to fell. Anthony Bonner is wanting a post up. He's asking for the basketball. They didn't get it to him. He wants to isolate Bush and try to get into one-on-one -on -one situation. Bonner. Push up! And a push down low. Goes against St. Louis. Mike Ivester called for pushing off his first foul. Southern Illinois gets it back with a five-point lead of 10. Good thought that time by St. Louis. Get the ball inside when you need a basket. Try to get a high percentage shot. That time Ivester called for pushing off. There's John Duff back on the lineup. The 6'3 junior from... St. Louis suburb, Washington, Missouri. He replaced Jeff Luchtefeld. He goes right back out of the ball. 9-16 left. Salukis leading by five. Again, they attack the zone. McSwain attacks from long range and comes up short. And out on the rebound, they are three on one. Woo, that was Anthony Bonner with some authority. That time, McSwain went for the steal at midcourt, and he got burned attempting to go for it. And Rich Heron didn't like it. He's going to get a timeout right here. Bonner recorded his 23rd point. There's Rich Crower. There's the crowd in Carbondale. Nine minutes left to play. There's your score. We'll be right back. Here's your whole story. Not much has been decided here in Carbondale, but we have nine minutes left to work on it. See the break coming up. You see the steal. Freddie McSwain's going to go for a steal right here by Newberry. He's the lone man back. When you're the lone guy on a three-on-one break, your job is to get back first and then set up defensively. He didn't. You see the end result. Anthony Bonner slamming it home. Again, a good look. You see when McSwain goes for it. Bonner's going to be wide open. He fills the lane perfectly and ends it with authority. And Bonner now with 23 points on this night and right around double figures rebounding. We'll check it out for you. Southern Illinois up three, 8.52 to play now. And St. Louis back in that zone. Bush, Mayhem. Explain. Shipley. Explain with penetration off balance, scores. Count the bucket, he's been fouled. Big basket for Freddie McSwain, and he has 13 points tonight. McSwain went to another level on this shot. Now take a good look at Freddie McSwain. Watch him goes up, waits for the defense to clear, rechecks it, puts it up. You get a great idea of the athletic ability of Freddie McSwain that time. Going to get a good look from the low angle. Again, watch him reset. Takes his time, defense clears. He's going to put it up, a chance for the three-point play. Just great individual athletic ability that time by McSwain. Second foul on Mike Ivester. McSwain completes the three-point play. He now has... Six points in the second half and 14 in the ball game. Checking Anthony Bonner, he has 11 rebounds to go with his 23 points. The Southern Illinois with a six-point lead and 8.22 to play now. Well, they just keep that margin four to six points. St. Louis keeps it right there, too. you again going back to that 2-3 zone. Much more active. Newberry. He doesn't seem to be as effective against zone as he does, man. Can't use that quickness as much. Puts. Fire. Heavy traffic. <laughs> Rejected by Jerry Jones. That's a mano a mano right there. There's a little message sent in that rejection. Face and face. You're going to see Jones come out. He times it perfectly. No doubt about that. Just a nice defensive play. Jones put it away with some authority. Come in here and get an easy one. Big time block. 
Jones' 13th block of the year, incident. You saw the freshman back in the ballgame. Robinson shakes open on the baseline. Shot won't go. Foots got pushed. I think called him. Look at the break. The Saluki's up. Swain finished it. That time, Mahan did a good job of forcing the defense to commit to him and was able to dish it off for an easy dunk. Southern Illinois again matching the biggest of the night at eight. And St. Louis is going to call timeout. This crowd will tell you all you need to know about the situation of the moment in Carmen. game was tied at 53 and the Salukis have hit him with a 10 to 2 run. Nice move that time by Sterling Mahan. You're going to see Freddie McSwain finish it off in great fashion. And if you're a player, you like seeing your head coach reaction just like that. Rich Hare with a, with a positive signal to his troops. Fifth year here as the head coach of Southern Illinois after 29 years coaching in high schools in Little Egypt. Southern Illinois on a 10 2 run. Again, St. Louis needs to find an answer this trip down to break that run. Anthony Bonner, if they can get him isolated and get him the basketball, that'd be the ideal situation for Rich Crowd. McSwain now defending Foots. There wasn't anything there for Foots. Mahan now is out front on Newberry. There's Bonner way outside with Bush. May try to take it past him, but gives it up instead. Anthony Jones down in the lane and scores. His first two points of the night. Needless to say, St. Louis needed them. Now it's a six-point lead to Southern Illinois. And a Saluki substitution, Calvin Lawrence, a 6 4 sophomore, replaced his 6 10 junior, Dave Bush. Again, St. Louis scores right after a timeout. Sign of a, a good basketball team and a good coach taking the timeout, executing per perfectly, just like you draw it up on the chalkboard. 6 51 left in the contest. Southern Illinois with a six point lead in the basketball. Southern. SIU Arena here at Southern Illinois, celebrating his 25th anniversary this year. Oh, Jones with a quick one, a whip and drop for him. Look at Shipley go to work trying to keep it alive, but he takes it out of bounds. Jones got it up in a hurry and just wouldn't fall. Shipley and Jones exchanged some words that time. Kipper's starting to get a little heated out there. Well, they've been nose to nose now for 33 minutes and 40 seconds. 6.20 to go in the basketball game. Anthony Jones needs some help. Newberry, quick move in the lane, and he got it. Oh, he was quick down in there. Good backdoor cut that time by Newberry. Came out to get the ball. A little pump fake that time by Jones. Newberry went backdoor for the two-point. Now a four-point lead to Southern Illinois. Newberry, eight points tonight. Shipley to Mayhem. to Mayhan to Shipley. Different defense now. St. Louis back in the man and down inside the freshman Melvin Robinson. That's a tough assignment for the freshman Melvin Robinson to have to guard the senior and Jerry Jones. Jones just doing a good job of posting up, forcing the freshman to commit the foul. Tyrone Bell back into the Southern Illinois lineup now. Mayhan sits down. too easy. McSwain right open with the inbounds pass. That's just a blown assignment that time because nobody picked him up and that was too easy. 18 for Freddie McSwain and a six-point lead to Southern Illinois. Robinson, Newberry passed up a three. Well started to close the gap and Newberry decided not to shoot. Five seconds, closely guarded call. Southern Illinois forces the turnover. Offensive set, credit the SIU defense again with yet another St. Louis turnover. You saw Jeff Luckerfeld check back into the lineup for St. Louis University. Now Duff back in the lineup. Shipley just gave Robinson a little push as he walked by him over there. I don't know if Robinson said something, but Shipley gave him a little chuck when he went by. Shipley, the tight player that's not going to back down from anybody. Going to let you know he's out there to play and he's going to play aggressively. McSwain immediately draws a double team and a trap on the sideline, but a foul is called. And McSwain, McSwain got hit in the out. face. Here's a question for you now. He's standing at the Saluki bench. The trainer still can't attend to him there. He's standing there looking at him. The foul was against Anthony Jones, his third. That's how St. Louis went to a half-court trap for the first time. 
And so you actually played right into it. McSwain immediately got tied up, but it didn't cost him. You see the team fouls in the second half. Both teams in the one-on-one for the remainder of this basketball game. 5-12 to go in the second half. Now when Southern Illinois took the ball to the out-of-bounds stripe, well, they really got jumped by St. Louis. They used that out-of-bounds stripe as the third defensive player over there. Well, you want to move the basketball. You don't want to dribble into the double team. When you see the two players come, you'd like, ideally, to get rid of it and move it passing. The quick players now can, can break it with a dribble, but generally speaking, use the pass and avoid that double team. Sonny McSwain with 19 points. Big rebound. But the shot wouldn't fall that time for Tyrone Bell. 5.06 to play. Southern Illinois by seven. Newberry. Bonner. Dub. Newberry's going to pop it quickly and back it in off the side. Ten points, Charles Newberry. Newberry's come up with a couple of big baskets in this game. Now the Salukis 5-5. Mahan will return to the Southern Illinois lineup, and their coach, Rich Heron, wants a timeout. He gets it. 4-44 left in a good college basketball game from Carbondale, Illinois, and we'll bring you right back to SIU Arena. A good basketball game here, 66-61, Southern Illinois at the moment. Now you see your clock, 4.44 left to play. We talked about the big city, small school thing. Look at some of the nicknames involved. Illinois is a state rich in high school nicknames. Rick Shipley is from Centralia. He's an orphan. The only place in the world kids want to grow up to be orphans. Dave Bush went to Hoopson, East Lynn. They're nicknamed the Corn Jerkers. And our compadre here, John Albright, was nothing else but a whirly in high school back in Greensboro, North Carolina. What is a whirly? I guess I fit right in with that group there. What's a whirly? Is that a beanie with a helicopter blade on top or what? A tornado. A tornado. Okay. Other nicknames close to Carbondale here. You got the Cobden Apple Knockers and the Teotopolis Wooden Shoes. Down the you got Jerry Jones for a slam dunk. He has 16. Lewis, you want to get Anthony Bonner involved in your offense. Newberry's been a key for him down the stretch, but Bonner's the man you want to go to. Seven point lead to Southern Illinois. 3 55 left in the game. Smart move that time by Mike Ivester. He set a solid screen, and Rick Shipley ran right over him, called for the foul. So Shipley, the Centralia orphan, called for the foul. The reason Shipley was so intent on getting through that screen, Anthony Bonner was the one coming off of it. To the line is Jeff Luchteveld, a 6'5 junior from Oakville, Illinois. He's been on a shooting slump, played for his dad in high school. Nails that free throw, his first point of the night. He's averaging four points a ball game for the Billikens. 3.55 to play. He could get him back within five right here. As St. Louis University hangs tough in Carbondale. St. Louis is going to pick up three quarters. Play some tough, aggressive half-court man-to-man. Anthony Jones putting some pressure on McSwain. Go to Lawrence. Swain against Luckfeld. Needs help. Shipley provides it. Nice bounce pass. All alone off the baseline is Calvin Lawrence in his first two points of the ball game. Puts the Lukies up by seven with 3.25 to play. Luckfeld. Newberry. Bonner coming out high. Shipley with him, and Bonner goes down the baseline. Floating jumper won't fall, but it's out of bounds to St. Louis. The point you made about floating jumper, that's the key. Anthony Bonner, too strong to float and stray away from the basket, but he'll take his time, go up under control. He'll get a good shot off, and or he'll be fouled. Luckfeld trying to sort it out, finds Bonner out on the way. Now Jones, they give it to Newberry, the point guard. Southern Illinois man to man. Luckfeld. Ooh, dangerous pass. Bonner able to get it. Only because Shipley didn't see it coming. There's Duff saving the rebound and scoring. Duff with a little token head fake. Lost two SIU defenders. Nobody to stop him. Got the two points. 70-65, Southern Illinois. The Salukis have the lead and the ball with 2.43 to play. Luckfeld tried to draw the charge. Didn't get the call. But the foul is called down in the lane. Newberry is third. Shipley's going to go driving in. See Newberry reaching in a couple of times. Gets it from the backside. That's where the foul was called. Shipley beat his man and did the smart thing. Once you lose your man, go to the bucket. He'll have a chance at the free throw line. 
So this is Rick Shipley, the 6'8 junior from Centralia, has 14 points tonight. He's hit four three-point goals. Rich Grauer, the Billiken coach, checking his notes as his ball club comes back to the sideline with 2.41 to play. And again, the Salukis leading by five. Rich Heron working in the huddle. Surprisingly, one of the problem areas for Rich Heron has been the free throw shooting. He's going to design to get to the get to the good free throw shooting. Georgia Tech out of the ACC and Georgia from the SEC hook up before a sellout crowd in the Omni. Two good ones on tap tomorrow night and a good one here tonight. Shipley to the line. And Rich Aaron told us today his high school coach Doc Hunsinger is where most of his philosophies came from and his college coach Jim Colley added some of them too but that's the way with most great coaches. They'll go back to their roots to find the basics of basketball. Basics don't change that much down through the years. Fundamentals are fundamentals no matter when you learn them. That's something you'll take with you throughout your career. Well, if you went back and looked at what Fog Allen ran or Adolph Rupp, just drive it down at Oklahoma State, Claire B, go to pick any big name you want to. You're going to find the fundamentals are pretty much the same. Foul on Jerry Jones, his third. And luck to fell right in the middle of all that commotion. He's a coach's son coming up with yet another heady play. I got kicked John not too long ago. You watched Oregon State practice. They came out and did all those little basic things. Then they in practice the three-man wave and nothing fancy, just good old-fashioned fundamental basketball. And you know what? It still works. <laughs> it does. Luchtefeld nails a big free throw for the Billikens. They're down by five with 2.20 to play. Luchtefeld now three for three at the line. Missed. He's been a little shooting slump, and that time the free throw came up short. Mahan with the rebound for Southern Illinois. To McSwain. Salukis have the ball with 2.11 to play. Again, they lead by five. Oh, Shipley really set a pick that time on Newberry, but it didn't shake a shooter loose. But Shway now gets Jones. St. Louis trapping when they can. Almost come up with a big play. Jones is going to be called for slapping down that time. But a good gamble that time by St. Louis almost paid off. See the good trap right there. Now watch Jones come down. He, got, he clearly got him across the arm. But they had Shipley with his back turn, and that's where most turnovers are going to occur in that situation. Minute 56 now left in the game. Shipley to the line. A 66% free throw shooter. Figure that out. He's a good field goal shooter. He's one for two at the line tonight. Shooting 66% on the year. Minute 56 to play. This is a big trip to the line with this club up by five. And the rebound fought for. And St. Louis has it. For three, he might have shot that thing a little bit quickly. Ball is out of bounds. Good look at the NBA scores. A couple of expansion teams, one a year old in, in Minnesota. Again, the Lakers with Boston, and you'll get details on all these games next on Sports Center. And we're leading Sacramento. They'll be updating that one for you a little bit later on tonight. Here, Newberry pops quickly off the baseline, and he sticks it. That's a two-point shot for Charles Newberry. He has a dozen tonight. Now a three-point game, a minute 38 to play. Immediately, St. Louis trying to trap full court. McSwain 
Boy, a turnover and a three here, and we've got a tie ball game again. We're down to a minute and 27 seconds left in the game. Well, if you're St. Louis, you don't want to gamble all out where you give up an easy layup. Play aggressively, but you've got time. Oh, foul. Duff just committed the foul. Get a good look at Rich Brown. He's talking to John Duff. Going to tell Duff what to do. He'll communicate it with the rest of the team. But again, with, with over a minute to go, if you're St. Louis, it's not time to panic yet. Not time to just go out and foul at random. Take, take your time. Selectively make your fouls. You don't want to gamble and give up an easy two. Free throw this, and now a foul is going to go against Newberry. Newberry on the floor commits his fourth foul. Let me correct something while I have a moment. The foul center is not next. He'll be coming up later on ESPN. Another week, I believe, is next. A minute 16 left in this game. That's going to put Kelvin Lawrence on the line. He has two points tonight. So Newberry is fouled out of the game. He has a dozen points as he sits down, and he played an outstanding basketball game for the Billikens of St. Louis here tonight. It's a very tough loss because with the time remaining, his explosive ability could either create the shot or because he can penetrate so well, dish it off to one of his teammates. And he has range. He's two for five from three-point range coming into this ball game tonight, so you lose the potential three-point shooter. The other thing, he's been in the game the whole time. He's had a chance to get involved in the flow. And Jeff Luckefell, although he's been in a couple of times, he has not played as much tonight. We asked him to come up with a big role. Now it's a four-point lead to Southern Illinois. And it's going to take at least two baskets for St. Louis. They could have tied it with 1-3. A minute 16 to play. throw misses. You know what Lawrence did that time? Just after he got the basketball, he turned around and looked. Generally, you want to concentrate on one thing, and that's the free throw. Duff with a three, three and it's a one-point one ball game. John Duff has seven points, a one-point lead to Southern Illinois with a minute two to play and a steal, and the Billikens have the lead. That time, SIU was not sure who was going to take the ball in. Confusion, and they turned it over. It is 73-72 St. Louis with 51 seconds to play. A quick turnaround for St. Louis. St. Louis is going to drop back in a 2-3 zone. A foul. Well, Foots has got to be careful. This is not the time to pick up a technical. Calvin Foots call for the foul. The Swain's going to drive out. Good pick set that time by Shipley, and Foots called for reaching in. You know what happened that time? A couple of the St. Louis players thought they were in zone. A couple thought they were still in man-to-man. -man. The, the team was not able to get themselves together in one defense or the other. Calvin Lawrence now sitting down, and Tyrone Bell back in the ballgame. Freddie McSwain will go to the line with 45 seconds to play, and his team down by one. He was 6-for-6 six six at the line in the first half. He is 8-for-9 in this game at the line. And has 19 points tonight. Again, at the free throw line, when you step up there, you're concentrating on one thing. That's the free throw. Nothing else should matter. The tie won't come. And the rebound to St. Louis. The Billikens have a one-point lead in the ball. Now with 40 seconds to play. Foots. Anthony Jones to Bonner, and they foul it. And that will put Bonner on the line, and he's a 77% shooter. Freddie McSwain going to the line was 8 for 9 in this ballgame and missed the front of a 1 and 1. Rich Brower. There's Rich Heron, the Southern Illinois coach. Now St. Louis is going to get Mike Ivester in the ballgame at 6 9, replacing Luxembourg, who was 6 5. Anthony Bonner's turn to shoot a big free throw. Karen Ott will have situation substitutions for both teams. Bonner with 23 points and 11 rebounds in this game. Now, a two-point lead to the Billikens, and this one could be big. 40, make it 33 seconds to play. 74-72, St. Louis, and it's a three-point lead to the Billikens. Bonner has 25. Timeout called by Southern Illinois with 30 seconds left in the ball game. So Rich Heron will go to work in the Saluki huddle. The Billikens have hit him with a quick shot late, and with 30 seconds to play, St. Louis leads by three.
point in this game. We'll take you to Motor Week Illustrated, then on to Sports Center to update scores from around the nation tonight. We have 30 seconds left. Southern Illinois with the ball down three. Well, if you look for the three-point shot, Mahan, McSwain, and Shipley are your three-point shooters for SIU. If they get a quick opportunity to get it into Jones, it wouldn't be bad to go ahead and put a two-point up and call timeout. But it looks like they're going to work for the three-point shot. Southern out of timeout. St. Louis has one left. Mahan off balance, fires it down inside. Jones for two, couldn't get it. Ball tipped around, and St. Louis has it. 17 seconds to play, and they're going to foul Jones with 15 seconds to play. That time Southern Illinois couldn't figure out exactly what they wanted to do. Mahan went up for the three-point shot, couldn't get it off, dumped it inside to Jones, and they never able were to get a real good shot off. They still had plenty of time to work for the three to tie. They just got in a little bit of a hurry to shoot it, it looked like. Now here's Anthony Jones on the line, five for seven at the line this year, first attempt tonight. If he misses, Southern Illinois has 15 seconds to get up a three to tie it. He does. Southern Illinois has got a chance to tie. Mayhan at the top of the circle fires off balance. Didn't get it. Shipley fighting for the ball. St. Louis has it. Five seconds to play. Steal by Mayhan. He didn't get it. And St. Louis wins the ball game. A wild finish here in Carbondale. There's Rich Grower, the Billiken coach. He wins at 75-72. Southern Illinois losing for the first time this year. They finish at 6-1 tonight. St. Louis goes to 4-2. 75-72. St. Louis wins it. Let's get you back to Bristol. And Chris Fowler. Okay, thank you, Fred. What a wild finish. Southern Illinois, a clinic, and how to throw away a basketball game. The inbounds pass right to the opponent. The missed free throw. They don't try a three-pointer to tie it. And St. Louis moves to 4-2. The Saluki's blowing a chance to have their best start in 50 years.